SDS page gels are similar to agarose gels in that we use electricity to move our samples through a uh, solid matrix or a porous matrix. Um, but there are many, many differences in the terms of like, how we handle them, the way we pour them, and even like their uh, sturdiness or robustness. So there's a lot of things that can go wrong during this process. So the key to running a really good SDS page gel and then a follow-up Western is uh, just come prepared and just understand what you're doing prior to doing it. So an important difference between agarose gels and SDS page gels is that we pour a uh, SDS page gel in between two glass plates. So uh, it's important that they're very clean. We got a thick plate with these little ridges that I just kind of showed, and then a shorter plate, a little bit smaller, uh, and then you'll notice like a little bit shorter that sits on top of that little ridge. And so cleanliness is very important. Any small sticky bits will cause your gels to stick. So we use some powder thing like Comet or Alkanox, which is like fancy Comet. And then you can just use your gloved hands if you want to. You can grab a sponge. You can use a brush. I think I found a brush later that I'm going to show you how to use. But generally, just clean it while most importantly for the plate with the ridges, uh, you want to clean that edge uh, right around the ridges. And then I make this little, I have this little makeshift rack that I use where I take some test tubes and put it in a rack. Totally not necessary, but I just leave it there to dry. If you don't have one of those, you can just stack it on paper towels because we're going to wipe these things anyways. Make sure you clean both plates uh, and then uh, have them ready to go. Once you're done with the cleaning, uh, just dry the uh, glass plates using uh, Kim wipes. Gotta use Kim wipes. You want to make sure that there uh, no there's no lint left behind or anything like that. Uh, do your best. Usually you'll find there are some streaks initially after the first dry, but then you dry it again and then those disappear. And I'm going to pour two gels, uh, so dry all four. Two thick ones and two short ones. In order to pour your gel, you're going to need a number of materials. You're going to need your plates, of course, a uh, little bit of filter paper if you like. I'll show you what that's used for. Or you can use paper towel. That's not a big deal. You need this uh, gel holder with the gasket on the bottom. Um, they hold two gels, or sorry, they're sufficient for two gels, but you can pour just one if you want. You need one of these clamps for, um, or glass plate clamps for each gel that you're going to pour. And since we're going to pour two gels, I need two of those. And then you need a uh, comb for each uh, gel as well. And our combs, we only have uh, 10 well combs, unfortunately. Uh, so all you're limited to is uh, 10 samples per gel. When using the glass plate clamps, make sure that the feet are on the bottom Oops. and then uh, open the clamps. Uh, remember, uh, the labels are facing you, the upside is up. Uh, the other way to do that is make sure that the ridges are facing you and is in between, or sorry, the small glass plate sits on that uh, ridge. I like to use a flat surface so the benches are great and then just simply clamp it closed. Uh, make sure that the edges of each of the plates are even, otherwise you're gonna get leakage. All right, repeat for the second gel. Uh, before you watch what I'm about to do, I'll just have you note that it's much harder to film this uh, while performing this. So uh, something so simple actually turns out to be a little bit more challenging than I anticipated. But, eh, you know, I got through it. And then you can see here, actually, you don't have to put in both glass plates at the same time. Um, just once again, make sure I like to just push, give it snug, make sure that the edges are lined up and everything looks okay so I'm happy. Uh, once you have your glass plates in the clamps they go on to the uh, gel pouring gasket. Let's get this out of the way here because it's in the way. I can bring this closer. Uh, legs on the bottom uh, and then you, there's a little clip at the top of this thing and where your glass plates just sit just like that nice and snug uh, and if everything is okay your gel will not leak. Uh, you can do a leak test if you want to. I chose not to because I'm awesome. And then uh, we're going to put in the combs now just to show you how they fit. Uh, and I'm going to do a little trick with them. And it helps to draw a thin black line just at the bottom of that green bar. Uh, so then you know how high to pour that first gel. But uh, we'll see that in a second. It's not necessary. Just a nice thing. Mixing uh, polyacrylamide gel, relatively simple. I use this acrylamide mixing container. Uh, just note that polyacrylamide, sorry, acrylamide is um, 
uh, neurotoxin, so you want to make sure that you're wearing gloves and you want to make sure that you're handling it very well. Polyacrylamide, once polymerized, is, uh, not, is less of an issue, right? So you don't have to worry too much about it. But basically, I just mix everything. I use a glass pipette to add the water. And then um, I use the, uh, it's this acrylamide, bisacrylamide mixture. Uh, the recipe calls for 2.5 mil. So what I do is I take 2.5, divide it by three. That's 833 microliters. And I just simply pipette that three times using uh, a P1000. It's much easier. Uh, and then this way I don't have to change glass pipettes. And then just do the same for the uh, resolving gel buffer, sometimes called the running gel buffer. Um, this is the part of the gel, the bottom part, where our proteins are gonna separate or become resolved. So you'll see it both ways, resolving gel or running gel. So 833 microliters, three times. Um, when you're using the 10% SDS, just uh, don't shake it, right? The SDS is a detergent, uh, so it's gonna have all these tiny little bubbles, right? So don't shake it, add your SDS, and very importantly, at the 10% APS and the Temid last. The Temid is the polymerizing agent. Uh, that's the thing that you want to add last. And when you're all done, I like to mix with the glass pipette that I started with. So simply just go up and down nice and gentle and then get it well mixed. As always, when mixing, just be careful not to uh, go all the way in, all the way out. Try to avoid uh, large bubbles. Generally, there won't be too many bubbles, but uh, it's always good practice to avoid those. And then once you have it all mixed, um, I suck it all up. And then using that glass pipette, wait for those things to bubble up. Oh, I forgot to remove the combs. Get those combs out of the way. Uh, I simply pipette the mixture in between the glass plates. So I, I like to let it rest on the short plate in the front. And then nice and slow, you want to go nice and slow, uh, slowly bring it up to that black line. So if you left the black line, bring it up to that black line. And then uh, just like that. And then if I didn't leave a black line, uh, it's that bottom of that green bar, right, where you would have put a black line. So for this line, it's not super important, right? You do want to make sure that you pipette nice and slow. And then I like to put in the acrylamide, uh, the remaining acrylamide back in the container. And then I take that glass pipette and go straight to the sink and rinse it because remember, acrylamide, bad. Once you have your acrylamide mixture in between the glass plates, uh, I like to layer it with some water. So you can either use the pipette, which is still set at 833 microliters. I like to use a pipette because it's uh, much easier. You get much better control, but you can also use a distilled water bottle. Uh, and then just gently layer it on top until the water reaches the top of that small glass plate. Doing this has two major effects. One is to help ensure that the uh, resolving gel um, polymerizes with a nice flat top. Um, the other effect is that the uh, reaction happens much better in an anaerobic environment. So by cutting off the oxygen, um, you just help that uh, polymerization step go much better. And then I'll take this acrylamide container, just cap it off, and then I'll show you what I do with it later. The polymerization step takes about 30 minutes or so, but uh, you can actually use your container and see that the remaining acrylamide will polymerize. So once that's done, then your gel is done. Another way to tell if your gel has polymerized is just look at that line. You can see that line, right, between uh, where the water sits and where the polyacrylamide has now polymerized. I guess the acrylamide is now polyacrylamide. Um, and so you just dump the water out, give it a good rinse, just take some distilled water and just make sure any unpolymerized bits get rinsed out. And so I'll rinse it from the top and the bottom. And then at this stage, if you made that little filter paper, what did I use here? I don't even recall. There it is. You can use that little filter paper and then just suck out any remaining water. Just be gentle, take your time, don't smash your gel. And then uh, as the water moves around, you'll always find little bits of water just kind of stuck. And then just use that filter paper to suck it up. But uh, filter paper uh, is expensive. It's not really expensive, but it's uh, sometimes not that available. And so actually what I do is I, I like to use a paper towel. So I'll show you what that looks like for the second gel that I have. Um, paper towel works just fine. Just kind of squeeze it in the corners and again, work it back and forth. And then you'll be able to get all the water out very easily using something very cheap and readily available.
So I'm going to flash forward a little bit to the future uh, because I forgot to do this. Uh, but it helps to draw the wells uh, in the comb that you put in. Uh, it makes loading so much easier. There are a couple of other tricks we can use to help with the loading, but this is uh, something you can do now. All right, back to present day. Let's get our acrylamide mixing container that I have cleaned, ready to pour my, uh, what we call our stacking gel. And the process is pretty much the same. I'm gonna take my glass pipette, add my water first, then I'm gonna take my acrylamide, bisacrylamide mixture, um, use a P1000, pipette 0.5 mils, uh, my stacking gel buffer, make sure it's the stacking gel buffer, right? If you mix the two buffers, you're gonna run into problems. Um, 1.25 mils it, divided by two is 625 microliters twice. Add your SDS and then uh, as before, your APS and your TEMET last. And TEMET is our polymerizing agent. Mix using our pipette and then gently pour in between the glass plates. And then save the rest of the mixture and we can add our combs. So simply insert the comb. A little bit of a spillage is going to happen, right? But insert your comb. Uh, make sure the flat end is in the back. There's a little ridged end at the front. So this is where I'm showing you. Uh, that doesn't fit, right? So just turn it around. And you'll see that is the flat end that you're looking at. And then now when you turn it over, yeah, that's not good. You'll see the little ridge. It's that ridge that's going to sit on the short plate. And that's much better. And then according to my watch, about 30 minutes. Set the timer. And once the stacking gel has polymerized, uh, we need to rinse it out just like before. So remove the comb, nice and gentle. Make sure you pull up and not wiggle it too much. And then we rinse it with water. But because of the space is so small, grab yourself a gel loading tip. It looks kind of like this, nice, long and thin. Uh, you can stick that at the end of a distilled water bottle and then uh, it's pretty straightforward, squirt, right? And so I usually go top down and then I just try to get rid of whatever unpolymerized bits are in there, uh, squeeze well. Uh, in the event you don't have a uh, gel loading tip, um, because they are pretty rare, we only have a few boxes lying around, you can use the LTS tips, they work uh, not as well because they don't let you get quite as far. And then in a pinch, you can just do it using a uh, water distilled water bottle without any tip. Uh, it's again, not the best, but eh, if you got what you got, you got what you got. And there you have it, two freshly poured SDS page gels.